What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of My Garage. As always, if you guys are enjoying this series so far, make sure you leave a like on the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. Today, I think it's probably in our best interest that we just start over completely from scratch. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. But in addition to that, I would also like to go over to the used car lot and hopefully purchase our very first used vehicle. We'll see if we're actually going to be able to do that. I have no idea how much vehicles in this game cost, but since we start out with 10,000 buckaroonies, I think we might be able to do it. So let's start things off by opening up the garage. And just as a little warm up, you know, we've been doing a lot of Mon Bazoo lately, sort of in place of this game. So I think we should probably start with just a really, really basic job. Can you change my windshield wiper blades? Maybe too basic, I guess. Ah, uh, what the heck? $37 is what we're going to get paid for this. Ooh. Ooh. This is either the Bart or the Chad. I actually don't know the difference between the two. They're both based off of a Dodge Charger or Challenger. I honestly can't remember. If you know, feel free to let me know down in the comments. But you know what? We don't even need to bring this into the garage since we're just doing the, the wiper blades. Let's just grab this guy here. Easy, easy, easy. Really? Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Really just trying to get comfortable with the controls again. Because, after all, it is quite a bit different than Mon Bazoo or My Summer Car. But with those off, I guess we should probably see what they're called. Just Wiper Blade for the Chad and Bart. So that still doesn't really tell me what it is. Unless we can use the info panel. This is the Chad. Nice. Very, very cool. Probably got a big old heckin' V8 under the hood, too. So in here, let's go to... Would it be accessories, maybe? I've seen quite a few different wiper blades in here, and I don't really know which one I'm supposed to buy. Oh, here we go. Uh, this is the chat, as we just learned. Perfect. So we need two of those. Just about $11 a pop. And they definitely look brand spanking new. Compared to the old ones, these are like chrome... These things are just dusted. So we've already got the one done, dude. This is seriously the easiest job we could have started with. But let's get that one. Nope. Try again. Right. Nope. Come on. You can do it. I believe in you. Right there. Done. And I think that's actually it. So let's come back in here. Complete the job. 37 bucks in the pocket. Pretty solid. So we actually only made $16 from that. But if we take these... And go bring them around side, around the side, to our dumpster. Oh, they're only going to give us zero. That said zero dollars. Why did we get money for that? Oh, it's change. It's loose change. So it's not going to be a, a full dollar. That makes sense. All right. So with that done, let's just casually walk on over to the used car lot. And we'll check this thing out for the very first time. I really should have... Oh, my. All right. Yep. Still getting hung up on the road. No big deal. Uh, but I really should have looked at this... A little bit more in depth during the first episode because I feel like we probably would have already owned a car by now. You will get up from any crouched position by pressing. Couldn't read it in time. Go figure. That's what happens, you guys, when you read at a oh, at a third grade level. Here we are. Stand up. This thing's kind of cool too. What the heck is this? The NIV. $6,500, little out of our price range, I think. And it's got a, a bit of body damage to it. I'd like to purchase something that doesn't have any body damage. And we just sort of have to get in um, mechanical working order, you know? That thing needs a new block, a new valve cover. That's rough. This one has some body damage. Well, we could probably come back tomorrow, so to speak. And we might have a different selection. None of these are really tickling my fancy. The next day. All right, here we go. It uh, Every time it loads vehicles, the game kind of freezes for a sec. Ooh, that thing. That thing is real, real cool looking. Again, I really do, really do like the look of these. I know you can also find cars for free just out in the wild. Usually in a bunch of brush. Shattered, oh man, if this thing didn't have severe body damage, that would be the one. I love the four-door. Uh, these two, or maybe three, are based off of a Lada, which is a, a vehicle we don't have here in the States, so I'm not super familiar. But 
it kind of reminds me of like an E30, just because of the headlights. Granted, they all kind of look the same. Man, okay, we're striking out. We're striking out, but it's all right. How much is this thing? Looks pretty clean there in the engine bay. I can't imagine we're going to be doing all that much. A little bit of interior work too, which is something we haven't messed around with. How much they... $9,800. No. No, 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 no. We're trying to we're trying to at least make a little bit of money on this vehicle, like end game. So we'll try this again. Third time's a charm here, ladies and gents. Again with the freeze frame. Okay, good thing it reset. That thing was on its side. Look at the sick exhaust, though. It's got a side cut out there. That is pretty cool. So this must be the Bart then. No, that's also a Chad. So it just has a different hood and a different exhaust. Okay. Wouldn't be a bad car. Would not be a bad car. Let's see if it has a V8. Oh, it sure does. It sure does. Distributor. Looks like it's seen better days, potentially. We got some exhaust headers on that side that are kind of shot. And then it almost looks like the whole block is going to need replaced. Or at least this front plate there. I'm not really sure what that is. We'll come back to you. We'll come back to you. This one, body damage. Not interested. I, I don't know how to fix body damage yet, so I don't want to... I don't want to take something on like that. This one's just missing a window. But we got the, the cabrio or the drop top. Oh, it's got body damage here in the front. Dang it. All right. Well, I guess that means we're buying the Chad today. If it's decently priced, it's not. It's fourteen six. Okay. Maybe not third time's a charm. Fourth time's a charm. This is it, you guys. This is it. I got a, I got a good feeling about this one. I really do. We've already... Got a pretty decent one here. That one has a little bit of suspension problems. This one, though, looks pretty good. Kind of rusty, but I think we could probably patch that up. That shouldn't be as big of a deal as, like, pulling some dents and stuff. Or replacing body panels. Yep, that one. Can't do it. This one needs some paint. It's got some major body damage. Broken windshield. All right. What about this guy, though? A block... What are you priced at? What are you priced at? 8400 bucks. Dude, if I buy anything under or over like 6 Gs, I don't think we'll have enough money to actually repair the vehicle. Should we try it again? This is it. Okay, I was like, wait, does it have the possibility of like not spawning cars? Because that would kind of suck. We'll just hit our head on the garage door on our way in. This one is in decent condition. We've got a little bit of wrinkling sort of going on with the rear quarter here. All in all, though, pretty solid, pretty solid. This guy, a little bit of rust. Got rear-ended, okay. You're off the list. And this one, the blue is a bit much. I'm, I'm tempted to buy the Smurf Mobile. Oh, no. Got some major body damage there on the roof. All right, what are you priced at here, bud? Is this a drop top? Maybe it's just a different color top. I don't know. 69. 69 could be okay. It's fairly clean. Got a little bit of rust. Color condition is four stars. Overall condition, three. I think we could make some money on this one. I really do. Hopefully, it, it actually works that way. But we're going to go ahead and purchase that for 6900 bucks. We've got three Gs left over. And now we can actually see the vehicle's original factory color. Kind of like purple. I can dig it. I don't think this is a drop top, though. Let's hop in. Hopefully it, it turns over. It'd be nice if we could just drive it over to the shop here. Yep. I don't think we're going to be driving it over to the shop here. So let's see. What would the problem be? Probably these leads, for starters. And then what else do we have? The block is pretty bad, but hopefully we can just wait until we actually get it up on the hoist to do that the air like intake cover is kind of rusty but i don't think that should matter let's get let's get these new leads from the store just down the down the road here and then with any luck that'll be all we need to actually turn the key in this thing we should sell these too while we're at it i think they have like a little tiny trash can here i'm not sure if this would actually fit in there but we're gonna try it's just spark plug wires for the lad that is all we need I think there's quite a few four bangers. There aren't that many V8s in the game. I think just two. We're going to get a whole dollar for that. Beautiful. 
Alrighty. And from, from what I understand, if we come to the sort of like shop here, the, the auto parts store, if we use their parts catalog, it's going to be cheaper than if we were to just order the stuff to our house, I think. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that as well. We've got the lad. Oh, wait, we have a lad coupe. Okay, I don't think that's going to matter as far as the engine bay is concerned. So let's grab the thing that we just done removed, which is going to be in here somewhere. Spark plug wires. There we be. Alrighty. The deed is done. We got them over here on the counter. Let's bring them back over to the used car lot, dude. I got a good feeling. I really do. I know I said that when we were like making our way into the garage for like the third or maybe fourth time, but I really feel good about this. Should be pretty easy, too. Just get those popped on. We'll leave the hood up just in case it doesn't work. And we'll hit the ignition. Come on, baby. Come on. There it is. There it is. All right, let's close up the hood so we don't, like, lose that thing going down the road or something weird. Close up the door. Enter to sit once again. And we are ready to rock. Oh, e-brake. Right, right. Wouldn't be a vehicle game if your boy doesn't forget to drop the e-brake. Oh, this thing has no balls. It's a four-banger. It's to be expected. I do like the perforated look of the uh, headliner, though. That's pretty cool. Vehicle audio is rather loud. Apologies for that. Let's try to pull this thing in as straight as we possibly can. And then we'll stop, like, just before the, the hoist uprights here so we can sort of push it into a better position. A lot of the time, the door is going to get hung up on the, the joist, so let's leave the e-brake down. We'll cut the ignition. No, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. Did I put it in neutral? Okay, I thought we were going to lose it. I actually thought it was it was going to go bye bye and just straight into our workbench over there. So let's just try to push it up forward a little bit. Not too far, though. Not too far. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. Nope, a little too far. Little too far. Let's back it up just a tad. Too far again, dude. I don't know my own strength, obviously. We'll get this thing up on the hoist and we can start inspecting the underside. Oh, I just noticed there's bolts like on the outside of the uh, mirrors there. That's interesting. Got a little bit of rust here on the rocker, but it's nothing too crazy. I think we'll be fine. Exhaust looks decent. Got maybe a blown out shock absorber back there. Something we can take care of, no prob. I'm really just trying to purchase a car for relatively cheap, like we have, and then put very, very minimal effort into it and try to turn around, flip it, see how much we can actually get for it. Oh, it's got a tow hook there as well. Got some upper A arms. That thing's probably seen better days. Doesn't look like it's that bad. Exhaust manifold. And then the block as a whole, is not looking the greatest. Let's see how much a block is. I'm not going to deliver it right now, but I'm just kind of curious. So we're still on the lad coupe. Scroll up. See if we can't find the block. 500 bucks. 552. Okay, we know we need one of those. So let's just go grab that from the parts store. Maybe it'll be a little bit cheaper. Remember 552, because you know I won't. Or maybe I will. We went from 552 down to 480. So it is definitely, definitely cheaper buying it from here. And we're just gonna, dude, we're so strong. We're so incredibly strong. We're gonna just carry this inline four engine block all the way back to our little shop over here. Well, we don't have an engine crane in the shop. We do have an engine stand. So let's just go ahead and mount that up there. Can we move this thing at all? No, yes, oh, we can. We can. We just kind of push it around, though, which is strange. I mean, it makes sense, but can't, we can't, like, rotate it or anything. It just goes forward and backward. Okay, we're kind of we're kind of just bumping it. Oh, no, that's not good. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's get you. I love how I'm talking to an engine block like it's a person. Let's just leave it here. Probably doesn't need to be scooted away from the wall anymore. So, obviously, since we've done this, we have to completely disassemble this one, which actually shouldn't take us that long since it's just the four banger. We'll first remove that belt, the accessory belt, and then where is our wrench? This is pretty much the only tool we're going to need to deconstruct this engine bay, so it shouldn't be too terribly difficult. We're going to loosen up the crank pulley there, loosen up that fan, probably knock off the alternator as well. Got a little bracket up there. All right, that's looking pretty good. 
See if we can actually remove that. Oh no, there's there's leads in the back. Hang on. Kinda kinda forgot about that. Got a couple of electrical leads back here. One bolt. I think that's all she wrote. There we go. And thankfully, I didn't realize this in our initial play of this game, but you don't actually have to drop the wrench to remove things from the engine bay or pick up and, and move things around. So knowing that now, it's going to make it way, way easier. Actually, it's it's smarter if we just drop her back down. And then we'll go ahead and remove the hood since it opens up like a, at a weird angle like that. It's just kind of getting in our way more than anything else. So let's come up here. Two bolts on that side. Two bolts on this side. For this, though, we do have to drop the wrench, I believe. And we'll pick this thing up. Maybe put it over here next to the wall. Just so it doesn't get damaged, hopefully. And now we're going to have much, much easier access to the engine bay. I'm kind of thinking we could remove the entire intake system as one solid unit. If we just remove four bolts on the intake manifold right there. Can we not? Okay, we can. We just have to pick it up from the throttle body. Now with that removed, looks like we're going to be removing, I think that's a fuel line, right? This looks like a fuel pressure regulator or maybe just a fuel filter. So we've got one bolt there, got another one just to the left. It is a little difficult to find all these bolts. I think that about does it. You know, we're going to have to disconnect all the coolant hoses and stuff too. So we've just got that one there and that one there. Water pump just has one more bolt remaining. So if we do that, perfect. And now if I were to undo these, I'm pretty sure the entire exhaust would drop. So let's try to undo these two first. Hopefully the entire thing doesn't just completely fall off. There it goes. All right. That's exactly what I didn't want to happen because now it's just freaking out under the vehicle. It's going to like launch the vehicle into the air. I can guarantee it. Hang on. Maybe I can, maybe I can get low enough to slide it out. Oh, we got to drop the ranch. Come on. I I can't I can't pick you up. Why can I not pick you up? From the front I can. Next up, we've got these four bolts here on the exhaust manifold. So we'll just pop those out. Good deal. And then I think that lead is probably going to need to come off. And then let's just go ahead and disconnect the battery while we're at it. Don't you Aren't you supposed to do positive then negative? Or is it the other way around? I never remember, you guys. Ultimately, I don't think it matters. Not in a game like this. I've somehow managed to lose my wrench already. Uh, not really sure what happened to it. It's not under the vehicle. Wait, what is... What? Is that the... F that's the fuel line. Yep, that's the fuel line. Okay. Oh, it coils it up, too. That's nice. Let's grab this. Place that up on the workbench just so we don't lose it. It kind of seems like if you leave your tools on the floor, you may run the risk of them just disappearing. So I'm going to make sure that we keep putting everything up on the counter here, just so that doesn't happen again. Unfortunately, still haven't been able to find that wrench. So we're just going to come right across the street here, grab one of those, bring it back over to the shop. Just $11, you guys. It's not going to cut into our budget that badly. We're down to 2500 bucks though. So we do have to sort of be a little bit careful. Oh my God. Oh my god, I found it. Hey, found it, guys. It's in the engine bay. Clear as day, too. Leave it to me to not actually see that until we get back with a brand spanking new one. Probably doesn't hurt to have two. And then starter has a single bolt there. Probably another on the bottom side. Let's see if we can crouch down and get it. Maybe. We don't even need to lift the vehicle. Perfect. All right. That is going to go right up here on the counter again so we don't lose it. Our main power and ground are actually just bound together, so that makes that pretty easy. I can't say I've ever seen a ground that's brown. Usually they're black in most vehicles, but maybe that's how Lada does it. We'll pop off these engine leads, or uh, ignition leads, I'm sorry. Grab our ranch again. Now we have the distributor in here. It's going to be a little difficult to see the bolt on. Probably don't want to be crouched for this, I guess. Where are you? There you go. Okay. So we've just got one bolt on the distributor, I think. Almost there. Almost there. Got it. Good deal. Good deal. Dude, I didn't even check the oil when we picked this thing up. It's probably bad. I mean, it's got to be bad. Judging by the um, block here, there's our distributor. That actually seems like it's in decent working order. So we've got this hose here. The exhaust manifold. A little bit of the air intake system probably needs to be replaced as well. But apart from that, 
it's really all we've found thus far. Now for these spark plugs, I know there's like a spark plug uh, puller tool. This guy, spark plug socket. So we'll pick this thing up, head back over here, and then we're loosening, so we're just going to go through, loosen all of these up, and then I think, I don't think we're able to actually pick things up while using that tool, unlike the wrench. Now with all four of those yoinked on out of there, we've got this little guy over here, but I'm almost positive, oh no it's not, okay I was going to say I'm almost positive it's like fixed to the block. What even, what is that? The, oh, the ignition coil, right. So we've got the distributor, and then the ignition coil, and then the ignition leads. That's going to be, oh, leading up to our spark plugs. That'll be the entire ignition system for the vehicle. Brake fluid reservoir seems like it's doing okay. No issues there. I think we're ready to just tear it down the rest of the way, unless we should try to maybe disconnect the trans, because we, we kind of want to leave that in there. You know, we're just doing a basic block swap yeah basic block swap that's what this is super basic stuff they teach you this in school i swear let's grab all six of these there's probably a seventh on the very very top there is right there maybe even an eighth one on this side right there okay with that done we should be able to remove the engine from the transmission without removing the rest of the stuff. But I don't know how this game actually operates yet, so maybe that's not even the case. Now, what I want to try here is just unscrewing the engine mounts, and hopefully we'll be able to, like, pick up the whole engine and just, okay, yep, sure can. Well, that's easy. Now we're going to have to take off the oil pan so we can get it put on our new block, and so on and so forth. Should not be too terribly difficult, I don't think. I really wish... Mon Bazoo had a little bit... Okay. <laughs> I, I really wish Mon Bazoo had a little bit more of this aspect of actually rebuilding or reconstructing engines and stuff. It really doesn't. It's, it's very limited in that sense. Don't tip over. All right, oil pan is coming off. There we go. And we can have a look at our crank. That actually looks pretty good. But the pistons, or at least two of them, are not looking so hot. So we will have to address that. We can kind of leave the bottom end together for right now. Let's actually tip it back over, and we'll take the valve cover off. We'll see, like, what the what the cam's looking like under there. You guys, I have not been able to wake up this morning, so one like equals one caffeine boost, or something like that. Maybe I'll just suddenly feel energized. I was due after the fact. It's not like it's early or anything. I just kind of had a long weekend, you know. This is just how Mondays go. Oh, no. This is exactly how Mondays go. So we need a brand spanking new crank, or crank, cam here. And then we need probably this gear, I would imagine. So let's take off the camshaft caps here. And we'll pop that cam on out of there. All the camshaft caps just disappeared. So I'm really banking on us being able to just reinstall this. And then magically appearing. That's exactly how it works. Okay, good. Dodged a bullet there. We also need a new timing chain. Let's once again... Get these placed up on the countertop. All right, now all we have to do is separate the head from the block because it looks like this is in relatively good condition. So we should be able to reuse this on our new block over on the engine stand. Hopefully. We'll see. It is so difficult to focus on these tiny little bolts. I could crouch down a little bit more, I suppose. So there we have the head removed. We do have a, a head gasket as well, which has seen better days. So we'll need a new one of those. Let's once again place that up on the counter and then like I said the the pistons in here are definitely gonna need replaced let's drop our little ranch here and then pop off the oil filter because that actually looks like it's in decent shape should you reuse an oil filter ever not knowing anything about the vehicle whatsoever no but we're gonna because it, it seems like it's fine now to take a look at this clutch oh dude it's gonna be nighttime here before too long it's a good thing we don't have like food and sleep and, and drinks and stuff enabled because that could kind of get old fast we've got the clutch plate cover removed that's going to be the clutch disc right there and then we have the flywheel right here all of which appear to be in working order so dodged another bullet back underneath the old engine we've got just a couple of these uh, crankshaft caps that we need to remove hopefully we can just eject the entire assembly there it is all right perfect now for these, 
All we have to do is get the rod caps here off. And then we should be able to just remove the piston as a whole. We, we kind of have to carry everything to and from by hand. But there is this box, which I've seen before and I really, really want to try it. I, I doubt it's going to work, but I'm hoping we can put some parts inside this little box and just carry it to and from. That would make things considerably easier. As I'm casually flipping through the parts catalog here, I ran across a 1.8 liter inline four. And the one that we bought was a 1.5. So now I'm kind of wondering if we even bought the right block to begin with. I guess we're going to find out as soon as we get back over there. But I think I've compiled everything that we're going to need. So let's try this box thing out and see if we can at least carry some stuff back and forth using it. it seriously, you guys, would be incredible. So far, it seems like it could work, hopefully. Drop the last thing in there. Okay, we're we're gonna lose we're gonna lose a couple of things. We're gonna lose a couple of things. Fuel line actually wasn't on the list, but I remembered as I was flipping through. Come on, dude. You're the only thing that's falling out right now. The only thing. Is it because it's just too big? Alright, we'll come back for you. Don't sweat it. Now we've just gotta very cautiously walk back so we don't lose anything else. Okay, before we do anything else, I think I need to make sure that we actually bought the right block. So that is a 1.5. Did we also get the 1.5? You're not telling me anything about ya. Let's drop you off the engine sin. We did get the 1.5. Okay. We're golden. No worries. But now I think we're at least good to dispose of our old stuff. So we're gonna get 24 bucks for the old block there. See how much we can get for a piston. Two dollars. I'll take it. That's honestly pretty good. Exhaust manifold is going bye bye what else can we get rid of? I do want to get into that a little bit more, but it can wait for right now. The head gasket, that's going bye-bye for a whole dollar. And then camshaft, see ya. And lastly, we just have the timing chain. Done deal. All right. Now we just need to fish out our two new pistons from in here somewhere. I got one of them. And we'll bring this over to our crank. And get that placed on there. Perfect. Grab the other. And do the exact same thing. This really shouldn't take us all that long to reassemble. We're going to take this now assembly of a camshaft. And try to just slip it on in to our new block. I think that looks pretty good. We'll grab our ranch once again. And just start zipping in these little buggers. Doing the clutch or reinstalling the clutch would probably be easier on the workbench just because you know that the engine kind of mounts on that side so let's start with the flywheel we're gonna need our wrench again get all of these secured and then our disc that doesn't have any fasteners it is just held on by the like exterior plate here or whatever you want to call it next up's going to be the cylinder head gasket that's got to go right there sandwiched in between the head and the block so we'll pop that bad boy on there as well. And then we can just tighten down all of these head bolts. There's quite a few of them, but it really isn't too time consuming, in my opinion. Now we can drop in our brand spanking new camshaft. That didn't want to, it still doesn't want to go in. Why do you, why are you fighting me? Why are you fighting me? Should we try to install the chain on it as well? It seems kind of weird. Or maybe we do the chain first. Nope, that just completely rejected it. Many, many minutes later. Good lord, I have been stuck on this, you guys, for so long. For so long, but I finally figured it out. You have to have the head without the cam, just on a shelf. Can't be already installed on top of the block. Now that we've done that, I think we're good to install the cam inside of the head. Right? Yes. Okay, good. So let's get this fastened down first. Then we've just got to get it placed directly on top of that. Okay. Hopefully it's it's staying in this time around. We'll see. Okay, now we're roughly an hour into the recording today. I think we're making pretty good progress. We just have to figure out how we can move this over closer. Come on, get there. Little bit closer to our uh like cabinetry and stuff you know where where all of our other parts are at 
So now that we've got that done, it should be a little bit easier to assemble the rest. Let's pick up our ranch once again. We're going to place the crank pulley now, get that securely fastened. It does have some timing marks, which appear to be lined up already. So I don't think we can actually change that, which is good. Then we can grab our oil pan and get that put on there. We probably should rotate the assembly here to do this, but... It's easy enough just to crouch down and, and do it this way. Oil pan complete. We're going to grab the valve cover and get and and get that and get that put. You're kidding. You're kidding. Dude, why why you no fit? Why you no fit all of a sudden? You were just fine. Do I need to take the cap off or... A few moments later. Part of me feels like my main hang-up right now has to do with this engine stand. In one way or another, it's causing problems. So I decided to just directly bolt the engine into the engine bay here. We've got the trans hooked up again. We've got the engine mounts hooked up. Let's see if we can finally put on the stupid valve cover. There it is. All right. What... A relief. Honestly, I was probably messing with that for a good 15, 20 minutes. But with that out of the way, I think we're good to maybe move on to the exhaust, I suppose. The engine's pretty well assembled for the most part. We do still have to take this apart. So maybe let's do that first. And we, we may need a few more parts here. Oh, yeah, we're missing an air filter. We definitely need a few parts. So we need an air filter lid, air filter, and then a new throttle as well we are back from the store once again so i'm just going to get out all of our goodies and put them right up onto the countertop also grabbed a new lower hose as well looks like the one that we have currently is not exactly going to hold up in the long run i don't think now all we have to do is loosen up these four nuts on the throttle body there we go and if we just rotate this thing around there's going to be two bolts right here on the top side that's going to disconnect that from the throttle body as well. Oh, that's what I forgot. I forgot to buy a throttle body. Okay, I will be right back. We'll leave the wrench right there. Ain't no thing. Just a little bit of walking. It's good for you. And yes, I realize that I've been referring to this carburetor as a throttle body the entire time. That's just what I'm used to. I've never actually worked on a, a carbureted engine before, so sorry about that. But... I think we are good to get this thing reassembled now. So let's slap this on the back side of that boy. Just two bolts on the top there. Now we can reintroduce that to our intake manifold. Try to zoom in as best we can here so we can tighten up these four nuts once again. And then we can just chuck the entire assembly in if we want to. Or we could finish her off with like the air filter. So we'll grab this brand spanking new air filter. Get that dropped in there. And all we have to do is add the cover on top, tighten another little nut, and we can drop this back on in there. All right, dude, we are making moves. It's finally happening. Won't be long now, and we'll actually get a turnkey in this thing. As for the exhaust manifold, I almost think it'd be best if we attach it right now. But it's not going to let us do that. Of course. Of course, of course. So let's get the exhaust header on there. Or the exhaust manifold, I mean. And with that done, if we grab the exhaust header, the whole rest of the exhaust is still connected to it. So I think we should be able to just place it in the engine bay right about there. It should sort of, you know, sort itself out here. And we'll zoom in yet again. We just have two little bolts right there. So this side of the engine, pretty well patched up. I think we're ready to move on to like the accessories and the ignition side of this engine. We're not going to be needing this anymore so we can... Go ahead and chuck that in the trash can. What else we got? I swear we bought other things. Got the carb right here. That's going in the trash. Four buckaroonies. And then I did manage to bring over that new uh, fuel line as well. So we could probably chuck that in here too. Right there. It's just going to have one single bolt on the side of the engine. That is not letting me screw it in. Uh, why you no work? Dude, it's just one problem after another today. Maybe maybe we have to wait until we have the fuel... It's not filter. I think that's actually the fuel pump. Yeah, it is. The fuel pump. So maybe we have to wait until we have this installed. Let's try that. Now we can get those two bolts securely fastened. We'll grab our fuel line once again. Unless this is the wrong fuel line, which 
No, it's not. Okay. So we've got one bolt right there. Perfect. And then let's get our four spark plugs put in next. Wouldn't it be so funny, you guys? Wouldn't it be just hilarious if I'm not actually able to turn this thing over once once all is said and done here? I'm kind of nervous about that happening. It, it very well could take place. You just never know. So we've got our spark plug socket wrench on those. Got those all tightened. Okay, we're going to lose that thing if we're not careful. Next, we're going to grab the ignition coil. And same thing, it should just have one measly bolt in the back side of it. Moving on to the ignition distributor. That's going to go right here in the front. Again, just one easy bolt right about there. So we'll drop our wrench and then pick up these ignition leads. Get those chucked in there. All right, we're looking good. Ignition system should be done now. We just have to do all the accessory things next. Alternator's gonna go on this little slidey bracket right there. I need my wrench again, so we can get that bolt fastened. And then there should be one on the bottom as well, right there. Good deal. Okay, next, just above the alternator, or I guess just behind the alternator, is gonna be the starter. So we'll drop that down. I was gonna do the water pump, but I was already hovering over the starter, you guys. It's it's fine. We have uh, we have no proper order of operations here. We are just straight up winging it. All right, now we can grab our water pump. That's going to go right above the alternator, as I said. We've got one bolt on the top and then one just around the back here. Right there. Okay, water pump in place. God, dude, I keep forgetting the zoom thing makes it look like I'm crouched, but I'm not. We've got the engine fan that's going to mount right on the front of the water pump. Got one bolt in the front of that as well. Now we can grab our little accessory belt if it'll let me. Okay, we might have to drop the wrench for this one. Let's see if we can pick that up. There we go. That's going to go right there. We are nearing the end of this project, ladies and gentlemen. We are nearing the end. We just have to put in our power and ground wires yet again. Got one bolt right there. I think two. One on the starter for power. Right there. And then one. Or I'm sorry. One on the alternator and then one on the starter. And then we've got the other one for the ground right there. Perfect. Now we can get our battery. Chuck that back in there. Make sure we have those terminals nice and tight. And then I think it's just our coolant hoses. We can put some fluids in this and fire her up. Dude, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I really hope it turns over. If not, I feel like this has just been a wasted day. The hoses are in. Let's pop off the radiator cap. Doesn't look like there's any fluid in there. Do we still have a jug of coolant? We sure do. Okay, and I have figured out how to properly pour all the fluids. I, I guess I don't know about properly per se. But this seems to work. You can see just there at the bottom it says filling. So we just let her eat. Just let it sit here and eventually the entire container will be empty. And the radiator and everything else will be full. Now we just have to top this thing off with oil. Let's check the dipstick really quick and just see if it actually has any. No, it is bone dry. I mean, makes sense, you know, since it's a brand new block and everything. And we kind of had the whole thing torn down. But we're going to head just across the street here. We should only need one of these oil containers. We'll bring this back across the street, fill her on up, and then we're ready, dude. We're ready to turn her over. I will admit the oil is a little bit more difficult to uh, see if you're properly filling than the coolant, just because the coolant's kind of at the front of the engine bay, whereas your oil fill place is clear towards the firewall. But that should be everything. Hopefully, we'll check the dipstick, of course, just to make sure we don't need a, uh, a second bottle of that. Worst case, we have to run back across the street. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, we just need one more, and I think we're done. All right, we've got our second bottle of oil in. We'll check the dipstick. It's a little over max fill, I'm pretty sure. I was sort of under the impression that we wouldn't be able to go over. I just want to see if it freaking starts. <laughs> Oh, right away. Compared to when we initially picked this thing up, we got the clutch fan working. Kind of kind of wobbly, but it is working. Accessory belt and everything is spinning. Let's check in our gauges. Does look like the battery is charging. Hopefully it gets up to operating temp. We don't have a ton of fuel, so I don't think I'm going to let it run for very long, but it's running, you guys. 
it is definitely running. I went ahead and just cleaned up our workstation a little bit, got the engine stand moved back over to where it belongs. Let's grab our hood and get this thing resituated so we can take this thing out for a rip. I should actually just drive it across the street. Wait, why are you not why are you not working? Okay, right there. Just got to put it in a really really weird spot. But we should just go right across the street and fill it up since we don't have that much fuel. But before we do that, I do want to check on the overall value of the vehicle. Now that we have all the parts reinstalled, we'll close up the hood, see what we got. 7400 bucks. That's pretty good. We bought it for 69. It doesn't appear that any of the um stars or anything improved, but I am very very happy about that dollar amount. All right, enough talking. Let's hop on in this bad boy. We'll fire up, go across the street, fill up with some fuel, and make sure that door is closed. Love the coupe. Really, really love the coupe. All right, e-brake is down. We are ready to rock. It's moving. It's moving, which means we did the clutch properly, or at least I think that's what that means anyways. Uh, what side of the vehicle is our fuel tank on? Probably the right. Let's see, what, is, what does that say? The handle on the pump icon is on the right, so I'm guessing... I'm guessing it's gonna be on the right. That's usually how it works. Either that or there'll be uh, an arrow pointing to it. But let's um, kick it into neutral, e-brake it up, cut the ignition because we don't want to explode while we're fueling. And we're good, dude. We can take this thing out for cruises now. We could take it to and from the store if we needed to. I don't think that's really super important, but put the cap up there. Grab this bad boy. Oh, okay, if you just hold it, it goes. How How do I know if I'm filling? Is it like the oil and the coolant? It is. Accidentally opened the trunk, but it's not a big deal. We're going to get this. I think it's a 20-gallon fuel tank filled up. And we'll see how much we're going to be spending for this. It might be pretty expensive. All right, says here $34. I didn't see it deducting anything from our money, though. So we might... Oh, we have to come inside to pay. I like that, though. I like that. A little bit more realistic in that sense. So we'll grab our fuel cap. Put that back on. Close the fuel door. Close the trunk, of course. And hopefully that's a full tank. I have no way of knowing until we check our fuel gauge right here. That is a full tank. All right, we love to see it. Go ahead, disengage the e-brake, and we'll just we'll just putt around. You know, we're not gonna we're not gonna go too far. I just want to drive our new car. God, the engine the engine noises are loud. Let me see if I can let me see if I can turn that down really fast. Oddly enough, I'm not seeing anywhere where I can decrease the volume so we might just have to suffer here it's not that loud i just don't want it to you know blow your eardrums out that would not be good but we can now drive all the way back over here to the store if we really wanted to we could even jump on this super super long bridge now the way i understand it the bridge more or less is only something you really want to go down if you want to destroy and or get rid of your car, which we do not. We've got a lot of money invested in this thing. We need to be able to turn around and sell it for some profit. But I'm just so stoked, dude. Now we have a working car to, to get around in for right now. And then in the next episode, we can start tackling all the other things. I really just wanted to make sure it was, you know, actually running, actually able to get around. So I'm, I'm stoked. Not only were we able to purchase our very first project car, but we were able to get it up and running properly in a few hours. Didn't really take us too terribly long, but I do think that's probably where we're going to wind down this episode at for today. So once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.